Welcome to the first in the series of CBT programs on the principles of electronics in motor vehicles. In this part of the program, you will learn the basics of electronics, semiconductors, diodes, transistors, sometimes and integrated modules can drive you mad. When your computer crashes, when you don't know how to set the video recorder, or when your mobile phone battery is discharged, just when you need to make an urgent call. But in general, modern electronic technology makes the situation is similar easier. in today's motor vehicles. We would be lost without electronics. We couldn't achieve optimized fuel economy or keep to today's strict emission standards. Many convenience and comfort functions would be impossible. And without active and passive safety systems, there would be many more injuries and fatalities. So, there are plenty of reasons to think about electronics. If you already have a good grasp of electrical engineering and electrical components, this teaching program can take you a step further. It shows you the basics of semiconductors. You will see how electronic components such as diodes, LEDs and transistors work. Finally, you will find out how semiconductor components can be put together into integrated modules how these are assembled into control units and how these in turn constitute the entire electrical system of the vehicle. You are familiar with electrical conductors. These include the wires in the car as well as the metal bodywork which is also a good conductor of electricity. You also know insulators such as most types of plastic, air and glass. These do not conduct electricity. Semiconductors are a special kind of insulator which can easily be put into a conductive state. Move the mouse over the pictures. Do you see a semiconductor? Then click it. That's right. This brake light contains LEDs about which you will learn more in this program. For the moment, this section is about the chemical substances used in the production of semiconductor components and for several other applications. Photoelectric cells are another example of a semiconductor. The energy of sunlight falling on the cell releases electrons, turning the semiconductor into a conductor. Try it out by opening the window to let in the sun. Electric current can be measured at the metal contacts of the photoelectric cell. Very similar elements can be found in the rain, light sensors fitted in many cars. Semiconductor components mainly consist of the chemical element silicon. Germanium was often used in the past, but is now only used in special applications. Occasionally, semiconductor components are made of chemical compounds such as gallium arsenide. Silicon is one of the most common elements on Earth. The raw material for making semiconductors is silica sand or quartz gravel. The silica is converted to silicon in an electric arc furnace. However, it must be extremely pure, which is why it is extracted in crystal form from the smelter. A pure silicon crystal consists of regularly arranged silicon atoms. The atoms are bound by their four outer electrons. Because it has no free atoms, silicon is an insulator. But what happens if other elements are added to the crystal lattice? Drag the phosphorus atom into the silicon crystal. It replaces a silicon atom. The outer electron shell of phosphorus has one more electron than silicon does. It releases this electron in order to fit better into the crystal lattice. These freely moving electrons make the crystal into an electric conductor like a metal. 
Semiconductors, which are doped in this way, are called n-type semiconductors. The n stands for negative, which is the charge of the electrons. Now apply a voltage to the crystal by closing the switch in the circuit. Current can now flow. Current is based on the movement of electrons. This is why it is also called electron conduction. Other elements, such as aluminium, only have three outer electrons. What happens when aluminium is added to the silicon crystal? Drag the aluminium atom into the crystal lattice. Three electrons bond with the silicon atoms, and there remains a gap, which is known as a hole. This hole can also move. When it is filled by an adjacent electron, this results in a new hole in another location. Now apply an external voltage to the crystal. The external voltage causes the gaps to move. This is known as hole conduction. Hole conduction is not the same thing as electron conduction or metallic conduction. For simplicity's sake, it may be seen as a movement of positive charge carriers. Semiconductors, which are doped in this way, are called P-type semiconductors. The P stands for positive, which is the charge of the holes. Like silicon and germanium, metal oxides also have semiconducting properties. These are compounds of a metal and oxygen. At very low temperatures, semiconductors act more or less as insulators. However, their resistance changes drastically with the temperature. Try it out and heat up the semiconductor. The higher the temperature, the more electrons are moved by thermal energy. Turn up the flame. The higher the temperature of a hot conductor, the better the conduction of current. Or, to put it another way, the resistance drops as the temperature increases. For this reason, they are called NTC thermistors. NTC stands for Negative Temperature Coefficient. The relationship between temperature and resistance is expressed by the characteristic curve of NTC thermistors. Arranged in a resistance measuring circuit, they can be used to measure temperature. NTC thermistors are used in vehicles where temperatures have to be measured, as coolant and oil temperature sensors, as intake air temperature sensors, and so on. All metals are cold conductors, which means they have a positive temperature coefficient, and their resistance rises gradually along with the temperature. PTC thermistors, however, are special cold conductors and are made of semiconducting metal oxide, usually barium titanate. Try out the temperature levels. At a particular temperature, their resistance suddenly increases, thousandfold within a few degrees, because insulating grain boundaries form. PTC stands for Positive Temperature Coefficient. The characteristic of PTC thermistors shows how they are suitable as surge protectors. Click the motor to jam it. The overload causes the motor to consume a very high current, which also flows through the PTC thermistor. This increases the temperature in the PTC crystal. As a result, the resistance of the PTC increases and it curbs the current, thus protecting the motor from surge damage. PTC thermistors are also used as heating elements, for example, in auxiliary heaters for air conditioning, in heated side mirrors, or in seat heaters.
they have many advantages over heater filaments. No red-hot components where dust can smolder. Easy temperature regulation and intrinsic safety. The last point above all is important. Because PTC thermistors curb the current at high temperatures, they act as their own safety fuse.